where do you think you're going? Stick around and watch part three of Hard Traveling, a folk singer's vlog. It's called The Meeting House. I'll give you a hint. It involves cake. I've been doing some hard traveling. We drove through Monaghan Town one last time, and I took pictures of the boys and girls as they walked in their groups to school. Mom and I quickly made a stop at another gas station with a deli, and I found it interesting that they sold black currant grape juice. It reminded me of Anne of Green Gables. How many of these do you know and recognize? Different brands, a lot of the same. They also seem to always have taco sauce on hand, whereas in South Texas they have hot sauce always available, even at breakfast. I had to take a picture of these bird's nests. It wasn't even Easter yet. We parked across from the station to eat and watched the creamy Irish morning light peeking through the clouds over a field. We're slowly heading to the airport and uh, still figuring out the driving situation. We're having some nice sandwiches. And let me see if I can get the lighting right here. It's a pretty Irish day. Here are a few more stills. Eventually, we pulled over at another gas station. I took a picture of the restrooms because I thought you would find them interesting. They have wooden doors. The inside is very cold because there's no heating. And there's no hot water either. <laughs> Ireland really roughs it. While mom was watching the birds, as she likes to do, I was starting to think about a place to film a video. Across from the station was a beautiful bucolic scene, and I wondered if there was some way I could take a video with it. There was also an old church across the street called the Meeting House. When we got back on the road, we narrowly missed the turn-in for the church, but we had enough time to go in reverse and pull into the driveway. Mom said, just walk in and ask if you can play. Signs on the outside of the Meeting House let us know that it was no longer a church, but was instead repurposed as a bakery. However, it's a historic site and there's a cemetery outside and not much renovation changed the look of the church on the inside either. As I panned about the room, I thought this would be a great place to have an impromptu performance. This being one of those times when you might never have an opportunity to do this again, I walked over to a lady at the counter and rattled off, I'm a musician from America, I'm heading back to Dublin, could I play here? She thought about it very briefly and then responded, may as well. We are at a place called The Meeting House. It's an old Presbyterian church that's been converted into a coffee shop. And uh, I just went in and told them I'm from America. I'm heading back to Dublin and, uh, and that I would like to play in there. And they said, may as well. I was told I could either perform downstairs in the bakery or upstairs. It was a little loud down in the bakery, so I chose upstairs. and look at the artwork. I was joined upstairs by one of the baristas who took this film.
when I came back downstairs into the bakery, I felt very appreciated. The ladies running the bakery sent us off with two giant pieces of cake, which sustained us while we navigated the wild streets of Dublin. We got back on the road and headed towards Dublin, and already it felt like nightfall was coming on. In the winter in Ireland, the sun comes up at around 8 o'clock or 8.30 and goes down around 5. And with cloud cover, it seems like nightfall starts to creep in the sooner. We were hoping to get to Dublin before nightfall, especially with Mom driving the left-handed car. This has got that magnetic field that draws you over. If you get too close, it starts pushing you. We missed a crucial turn that would have taken us into the airport a lot sooner. Instead, we went into downtown Dublin. We got lost, and of course, we didn't have a GPS, and our cell phones weren't working. So we went into a gas station, and while I used their Wi-Fi, I was able to pull up a map that guided us into the airport, but it wasn't without much complication. There's the ocean. We're in Dublin. Heading back to the airport. We wound up having a difficult time getting through the neighborhoods of Dublin. The streets are so skinny and there are so many pedestrians and bikers and dog walkers. Even with our tiny little Volkswagen Golf, it felt difficult to squeeze in. Poor mom was having to deal with me exclaiming, You're so close! Oh, you're gonna hit it! And eventually we did connect with the side mirror on a lady's car. She wasn't real pleased. And I simply rolled down my window and said, I'm sorry, we are Americans. There was no real harm done. Mom and I have been driving through Dublin in the dark and she has to drive on the wrong side of the car. And here's all I have to say. Ireland is a left-hand dominant person's paradise. And it is a right-handed person's nightmare. When I was at the conference, I asked a man if there was a reason why Ireland was so left-hand dominant. I said, are there more left-handed people here or something? He said, it does seem like we have a more left-hand dominant population. In fact, I'm left-handed. When we finally arrived at the airport, it became clear we were going to be pulling an all-nighter. We thought about staying in a hotel, but it was already so late and our plane flight was so early that it didn't seem to make sense to go out of our way to go to a hotel. And we weren't the only overnighters. People took naps at the booths around the cafeteria. And we found a couple of comfortable chairs across from a coffee shop. We kept ourselves awake until we couldn't stay awake anymore. And then we slept a couple of hours. And woke to people coming through the line for breakfast. At that point, we bought some coffee and a muffin. And we headed to the lines to get our baggage checked. There we met a wonderful young man named Jake. Whose dream was always to work in the airport. We had an instant connection with him. And he was there to see us off when we stepped through the last gate to go onto our plane home. As we were going through security check, I noticed there was another musician. We started having a conversation with him and his wife. His name is Alan Harris, and he is also a Roots musician. A little more towards the jazz and blues side than I am. They're Americans, and he had just finished his tour in Ireland and was heading to Athens, Georgia, a place we know right well. Here we go, back to the States. Back. As you might imagine, it was a little emotional for me to be leaving the green shamrock shores of Ireland. This was my first trip abroad and I wondered if I would ever do it again. A mix of wonder and excitement and sadness over leaving coupled with sleep deprivation made me dewy-eyed on the plane. That view from the airplane window was, once again, very profound. I viewed old Ireland in its essence with its clear-cut divisions of farmland like a faceted emerald. That emotion spilled over in a song of gratitude to God for giving me the opportunity to see this land, and I hope to give the song as a gift to true fans who supported the trip once I'm finished writing it. Here's a little bit of it.
was, for me, the beginning of my journeys abroad. It was my first big step to expanding my reach into other countries. I want to thank all of you true fans who supported this trip. I couldn't have made it to Monaghan without you. If you have enjoyed this video log of my travels in Ireland, please like the video and leave a comment below. And if you've just discovered my music, Lord please willing, be sure there will be more adventures ahead. Y'all take care and may the road rise up to meet you.